Hello and welcome to this demonstration cloning a PDB using ACFS snapshots. We assume we have a three node cluster setup with SCFS. Let's verify this setup using ASMCA. As you can see, we currently have two disk groups, FRA and data. Here we look at data attributes. They are all set to 12.1 to make sure we will benefit from the latest ASM features. Now, let's have a look at the volumes created. There is only one called CDBVol stored inside data, enabled on three nodes, and used for ACFS. The mount point for this file system is slash u01 slash app slash oracle slash ACFS mount. We can verify this by looking at the ASM cluster file system created. Slash u01 app oracle ACFS mount is mounted and accessible from all three nodes using cdbvol. Let's exit from ASMCA. We can check there is nothing currently stored in our file system directly from the OS. Time to create our new container database using DBCA. We want to create a new database. We use the advanced mode here. Select the default template to create a policy managed rack database. We will call this database CDB1. And make sure it is created as a container database with one PDB called PDB1. We will use the existing pool containing three hub nodes And for the sake of this demonstration, we will not use any management tool. Same password will be used for all database accounts. Now it's time to specify the storage type used to store this database. Here we select file system. The only cluster file system available currently is the one we already created and mounted to user one app Oracle ACFS mount. Note, Aura data subdirectory will be automatically created. For this demonstration, we will not use any fast recovery area. We will not use the sample schemas. Regarding the memory size, we will adjust it to what is currently available on our system, but on a production environment, you should use more. We then make sure Unicode is used to store characters in this database. We are now ready to create this container database. Prerequisite checks are executed. This may take a while to complete.
we get to the summary screen from where we make sure all this set up properly. And then we start the database creation process. Depending on your machines, this process may take a while to complete. Copying database files, creating and starting Oracle instances, creating cluster database views, completing database creation, creating pluggable databases. Once finished, we can exit from DBCA. Now, we are going to verify what has been created inside our ASM file system. ORA data subdirectory was created and contains the files for our container database. In addition, we currently have two instances running on the first node. One for ASM and one for our container database. Let's set up the environment variable to connect to CDV1 using SQL Plus. We connect to the root of CDV1 as user sys. Let's list all the existing PDBs and their respective open mode. We can see PDB1 is in read-write mode. We want to make sure Oracle Manage Files is used by this database and points to U01 App Oracle ACFS Mount Aura Data. This directory is automatically used by the system to create any new database files. We now want to clone PDB1 using the snapshot copy capability of ACFS. Before we can do so, we must close PDB1 on all running instances in the cluster. At this point, if we execute the cloning statement to create PDB2, we get an error message clearly asking us to open PDB1 in read-only first. This is only needed to be done on one node. Once open read-only on the first node, we can clone PDB1 into PDB2 using the snapshot copy close to create the pluggable database. Because we are using OMF, there is no need to specify any storage location close. The create pluggable database is very quick in this case as it uses the ACFS snapshot capability automatically. We can now open PDB2 in read-write mode on all running instances in the cluster. Last step is to open read-write PDB1 in all running instances. 
Here, we close it first and open it in read-write mode next, but we could have done this in one step by using the alter Vagable database open read-write force command instead. The force keyword allows user to remain connected to the PDB while the open mode is changed. Let's check the open mode of all PDBs in this container database. We are done. We can verify directly from the OS what are the created files. A new OMF directory was created to store PDB2 files. We can verify the created data files are in fact snapshot copies of PDB1's data files using the ls-al command. This concludes our demonstration. Thanks for watching.